that. Arohama, I just got this flash thing. This flash thing. Time hasn't started yet, eh? Is that, how do I make it? How do I do that? Oh, it's there. Cool. Yeah. Uh, kia ora tātou. Um, he uri tēnei o Ngāpui, Te Atiawa, Ngā Ruahine, Te Rarawa, Ngā Te Whakaue, and County Clare in Ireland. Um, my name is Laura O'Connell Rapira. Um, I'm the director of Action Station, and we work, I mean, probably all of you, who's heard of Action Station? Probably if you're in this room, you have. Yeah, cool. Kapai. Love that about Wellington. Um, okay, so I'm going to share three pieces of research with you today um, that Action Station has done over the last three years. Um, to gather the perspectives, the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations of everyday people, because I thought it'd be really awesome to bring um, the, their whakaro into this space. Um, so the first is a piece of research that we did in 2018 with over 1,000 young people to gather their perspectives on well-being. And um, cheers to Tam. Is Tam here? Tam did this awesome as illustration behind us, or animation behind us, image behind us. Um, the second is insights that we've drawn from a survey of over 1,000 Māori and Pacifica people about alternatives to armed police. And the third is a piece of research that we've only just finished analysing, like literally yesterday, um, of over 4,000 New Zealanders for their perspectives on how we should regenerate from uh, COVID-19. Once I've shared those insights from that research, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pitch to you all about how I think we can work together to make that happen. So the first piece of research I'm going to share is our, um, is our uh, research that we did in 2018 with young people. The way that we gathered these insights is we did a survey that was answered by 1,045 young people. We did 12 interviews with youth workers, teachers, and researchers. And we also did 16 workshops with 149 young people at Festival for the Future, which was here in Wellington in 2018. And what I'm going to share with you is the key themes that rose to the top and what we heard in the conversations that we had with young people. So the first theme that rose to the top, which will probably be no surprise to anybody here, is that young people would like more, um, would like more better and accessible mental health services, education and support specifically for young people. Um, young people say mental health services need more funding. They believe mental health workers should be well paid and well trained. And there was also a desire from young people for mental health services to be available specifically for different cultures, different sexualities and different genders. There are a lot of stories that came up in the interviews that we did about people being misgendered in their counselling sessions or having to explain microaggressions in their um, counselling sessions and that's simply not okay. Um, the young people we spoke to highlighted economic insecurity, unaffordable housing, student debt and insecure low paid work as significant contributors to their anxiety and to their stress. Here in Aotearoa we probably all know that there is a racial wealth gap. Um, in 2015 the median Pakia had $114,000 of wealth. The median Asian person had $33,000 of wealth, Māori $23,000 and Pacifica people $16,000. And so the gap between your average Pacifica or Māori person and your average Pākehā person is about 100k. But we also know that of the age groups that have the lowest amount of wealth it is young people and our survey certainly showed that that was the case. Young people want everyone in Aotearoa to have a warm, dry home. The young people we spoke to, they want, um, they spoke about, and I don't think that this is exclusive to young people, I think that everyone in Aotearoa shares this love, um, which is our love of our wild places, our rivers, our forests, our awa, our moana. But young people also spoke about their um, deep concern that we are not doing enough around climate change. Many young people spoke about, not in these terms, but they spoke about climate anxiety. They spoke about feeling enormous pressure on their generation to solve a lot of these problems. Um, and, um, uh, but at the same time, they talked about um, their love of spending time in nature, their love of the rivers, their love of the wild places in Aotearoa that we're lucky to have on this whenua. Almost half of the young people we surveyed, they chose body image as one of their biggest concerns, and I think that that's something that should probably concern all of us. Um, I should mention that our survey was overrepresented in um, young women who took the survey, but that's not to say that this is an issue that only affects young women. It just means that young women were the ones who took our survey in the highest numbers. The young people we engaged with, they want to see an end to oppression of all kinds. 
No more racism, no more sexism, no more homophobia, transphobia or ableism. The young people we spoke to also, they spoke about valuing accessible and affordable education, but they worry that they're not being taught the skills that they need and the knowledge that they need to be flourishing in the 21st century. A lot of young people, and it's worth bearing in mind that these were conversations had at Festival for the Future, which is sort of pitched towards young people who want to change the world, usually through business and social enterprise. But they talked a lot about the gig economy and the difficulties of finding um, a degree that will set you up for the gig economy, um, for an increasingly automated uh, uh, economy as we go forward. And they talked about a desire for purposeful but also secure jobs. Um, the teachers we spoke to uh, expressed concerns about the disparities between the way that sexual um, health, uh, healthy relationships and consent education is taught across schools because there are consistencies school to school depending on where you go. Inconsistencies, sorry. Young people, I would say, have grown up in the era of the individual. Young people have only ever lived in a time that has been dominated by neoliberal discourse and economics and uh, a huge focus on the individual. But despite that, young people, and maybe because of that, young people expressed an innate desire for more community and more communal spaces. Many of the young people we spoke to, both in the workshops and in the open field survey uh, questions, expressed a desire for more community spaces to connect not just with people their own age, but with people across the different generations. Um, for some young people, a safe community space to go to can be a refuge from home, and it can also be a refuge from loneliness. Um, and this was especially uh, prominent with young people who lived in um, areas that have less uh, people in them, so, so more rural and regional areas, because what can often happen in those places is there's like one youth group or one youth space that's set up, and if you don't get on with someone there or you're bullied there, then actually where are you supposed to go? And so more work, more energy put into building uh, and con uh, into creating more community spaces where people can connect across generations, I think would be a worthy uh, endeavour. And the last theme that rose up was that young people would like to see more people that look like them in positions of power. And I would also add to that that since we did this survey, actually young people have been stepping up to do that. Lots of young people, as folks will know, uh, ran for local council last year. Several of them um, got elected to local council, which is really, really brilliant. Um, but the reason I raise this point is because in the survey we asked young people, do you know how to change things in your community that you don't like? And most people answered no. And so I think there's a, really, uh, there's a really great need for more citizenship education, and I deliberately use the word citizenship and not civics because I don't think we need to teach people the mechanics of MMP. What I think we need to be teaching people is their own power um, to effect change in their communities, in their country, and in their world, and to help connect them with social movements and all of the incredible things that social movements have achieved throughout the years, both in New Zealand and abroad. So in short, what I think we heard from the young people that we spoke to is that they would like to see an Aotearoa that is clean, green and beautiful, a country that nurtures life and nature and takes action on climate change, a place where every single person has access to great mental health, great education and warm, secure housing. There are well-resourced community spaces where people can come together across generations. There is no racism, sexism, ableism, transphobia, xenophobia, body shaming or homophobia, and everyone has enough money to flourish. Which is quite a lovely vision, really, isn't it? The second thing I want to share with you is a survey that we did of 1,155 Māori and Pacifica people for their perspectives on armed police. We launched the survey after we found out that there was little to no engagement in the decision to do a trial of armed police with Māori and Pacifica communities. And what we found probably won't surprise anyone. 85% of Māori and Pacifica people did not support the trial of armed police. 87% of people said that knowing police were armed in their communities made them feel less safe. 78% of these people had experienced or witnessed racism from police, and 92% of people, so almost everyone, agreed that we should be prioritising alternatives to armed police, such as teams of paramedics and trauma and culture-informed health and mental health experts, de-escalation specialists who are on call and available to everyone who needs them 24-7. Um, we worked with Māori Mermaid to create these really beautiful posters um, with, um, with the vision that Māori and Pacifica people told us that they share for, um, 
for alternatives to armed police, and then we and then we crowdfunded them into these giant, big, beautiful posters that we put up near police stations in Auckland, Wellington, and Christchurch. I saw this one last night. This is a photo from last night. You can see I'm very stoked. Um, uh, so you can actually still see them because some of them are around uh, Wellington right now. And what I think this survey shows us is the importance of being led by Māori and Pacifica aspirations instead of Pākehā fear. Um, because Māori and Pacifica aspirations are also based on evidence, like this works, armed police doesn't. All right, the third piece of research I'm going to share, and I'm sorry I'm like speeding through this because I'm conscious of the time. Um, Cool, awesome, thank you. Um, it's very recent, as I said. In May and June, we surveyed over 4,000 New Zealanders for their perspectives about how we should regenerate from Aotearoa, uh, sorry, from COVID um, here in Aotearoa. 30% of the people we surveyed were low-waged workers or people on benefits. The average time that people spent on the survey was about 30 minutes, which means that what I'm going to be presenting to you is, a, is more than 2,000 hours worth of collective wisdom and insight, which I think is really wonderful. Um, and the first thing I want to share with you is, is the perspectives of the people who are on low incomes. When we ask them what are some things that would help make your financial situation better, the top four answers were make fresh fruit, vegetables and meat cheaper, provide free dental care, guarantee a living wage and individualise all benefits. So it's not like people on low incomes are out here wanting super yachts, they want the basics. And I feel like that... That's something that we should make happen, this electoral cycle, like we've had enough. <laughs> um, what is good is that we just commissioned polling at Action Station um, to find out how New Zealanders feel about individualising all benefits, and what we found was that 53% of Labour voters are in support of, um, of individualising benefits, and I think that that's more than it's probably ever been. And so I'm feeling very hopeful about that, and so over the next couple of months, one of our big focuses at Action Station when it comes to welfare reform will be about advocating for the individualisation of all benefits. And I think that this is really important because... Um, there's a lot of disagreement about sort of a basic income versus welfare reform, but actually both of like both of both welfare reform and the basic income share the same principle, which is that regardless of your relationship status, your work status, you should be entitled to income support. And I think the more we can have those yes and conversations and focus on the values that underpin the policies that we are advocating for, the more likely it is that we will win. And that's what we're here to do, right? We're here to win. So the key themes that rose to the top when we asked people what they hope New Zealand will look like in five years' time, if we get this moment right, we're very similar to the same visions that we heard in the survey that we did of young people a couple of years earlier. We will have a caring, green and equitable society and economy. People, government, business and iwi will work together to care for and nurture our whenua, moana, awa and taiao. Communities will be happy and healthy and supported to care for one another. There will be well-funded public services, housing, education and health for all. All communities will experience vibrant local living. People will be supported to live their best lives. We will have a vibrant, robust and transparent democracy. We will have an independent and progressive values-based foreign policy. We will honour te tiriti or waitangi. We will think and act long term. We will work together for a justice system that prior prioritises prevention of harm, restoration and healing. I don't want to be disrespectful to the people who have lost their lives because of COVID and the people who are still losing their lives all around the world. Like COVID has brought immense trauma to many, many people. But I do also want to name that COVID has presented an opportunity for us to hit the reset button. And I think what these surveys show is that people would like that reset button to result in us building a better world than the one we had before. And I think that is our mission, and I think that mission starts today. Um, and my pitch to you is, um, here is how I think we can do it. So over the last six years, Action Station has had the benefit of working with more than 100 organisations on a, on a wide range of campaigns. Um, we worked with PSA and the Yes We Care Coalition and a bunch of um, you know, uh, people who have been impacted by Ill, mental ill health all around the country uh, to achieve a $1.9 billion boost in government mental health funding. We worked with HELP and a bunch of other sexual health organisations to achieve a $320 million boost in sexual health funding. Uh, we worked with Mana Whenua, Ihu Mātau, to um, haven't quite yet got a successful result on that, but I'm hoping that will come soon, um, to raise more than $100,000, mostly from small donations, to sustain the peaceful resistance and occupation there. 
we came together as a community after March 15 to successfully change gun law reform. Um, there have been two, in the time that I've been at Action Station, there have actually been two increases to core benefit levels in Aotearoa, once under National for $25 a week and once under Labour for $25 a week. That wouldn't have happened without the efforts of Child Poverty Action Group, the Equality Network and a bunch of other incredible groups. Um, a lot of people rallied behind Renee Maihi to, uh, uh, to defend her against Bob Jones and his racism. And um, more recently, we saw communities come together to halt the use of armed police in our country. And so I would say that our movement, the progressive movement, has been very, very good at affecting change at the top level of this pyramid right here. We have been very good at affecting policy, practice, and resource flows. Um, and what I am proposing is that by coming together in relationship with one another, building trusting relationships with one another to shift power and to shift mental models, which is dominant narratives that our society has about our society, so in our case a neoliberal, individualistic, dominant narrative, to shift those narratives. If we can work together to effect change at every single one of these layers, then I think that we um, become an unstoppable force for not just shifting resources, practices and resource flows, but actually achieving transformative systems change, which is what I think that all of us are here to do. So over the next six months, Action Station, we've been um, given a grant by Peter McKenzie Project to work with uh, Te Kona Teraki, which is an iwi-based organisation from Naitahu, the workshop, which is a think tank that focuses on research that shifts hearts and minds to more progressive positions on different kaupapa, and Fakaro Factory, which is an indigenous-led creative agency. We're going to be working together over the next six months to develop, a, um, to develop and promote a values-based vision based on an economic and political system designed to care for the earth and care for one another. Um, we'll be, to develop that vision, what we'll be doing is we'll be drawing on all the research that Action Station has done over the last couple of years, but we'll also be doing a, kind of nerdy, but a literature review um, of all of the visioning projects that have happened over the last 10 years, because we're very conscious that we don't want to replicate the work that has already been done. Instead, of, instead, we want to amplify the work that has already been done, to find the connections among our various visions so that we can better t weave together our relationships of solidarity and strength, because I really think that our struggles are way more interconnected than we realise, and so are our solutions. Um, so the, the narrative that we will develop will draw on this, um, will draw on these, um, on the work that has already been done, on the whakapapa of these visioning projects, and then what we will be doing is we'll be inviting organisations to join our coalition to work together over the long term towards achieving this vision. And the way that we'll be doing that is we'll be using what's called the collective impact model. <coughs> So some people might be familiar with the collective impact model, but it's very simple, and I like simple models. I think they're really good, um, because that usually means that they can work. You shouldn't have to have a PhD to understand how to do these things. The, co the conditions of collective impact are that you have a common agenda, a shared vision, a shared goal. Where are we going? Where is this waka heading? You have a shared set of measurements, so you know how you can assess whether or not you're actually heading in the right direction. You have mutually reinforcing activities, which basically means a bunch of different people doing a bunch of different things using their strengths, their networks, their connections, their power, um, but towards the same shared goal. We keep in communication with each other. We have wānanga, we have zui, we have phone calls, we have coffees. Um, and then you have a backbone support. Uh, you have an organisation that acts as the backbone support. And I am proposing, at least for the next six months and a little bit longer, Action Station can help be that backbone organisation to this. We have a lot of experience, mostly at coordinating community groups and people. What we are wanting to do is help, help organise organisations and institutions as well. Um, and so I invite you to, uh, to have a corridor with me. I'll be here all day, apart from for the next, from 10 till 12, where I have to run to a board meeting. Um, but I'll be here this afternoon. I invite you to have a conversation about how you may be a part of this coalition. Um, and just to end on a visual note, just because I love these fish, um, this is what the progressive movement is, um, is dealing with. Um, we are up against great forces with a lot of money. Um, and the only way I feel that we can overcome those great forces with a lot of money um, is by working together. So thank you very much. Tēnā uh, koe e Hi, ho. We have some time for some, some part time, so I'm going to, for one or two, so you fellas think about a question, but I'm going to um, pop in one first. 
Um, but, you know, mihi to, the mahi that you do and Action Station do and giving voice to the people that are affected by decisions that are often made by people that don't come from those communities and creating those outcomes. I think that's really important. Um, I just want to pull out one um, of those things that you talked about, the ART, so the Armed Police Response Teams. We know that the majority of Māori and Pacific uh, whānau who were asked were against them and felt even more unsafe if police were armed. But we know that when you did it without targeting Māori and Pacific, and it was predominantly non-Māori and non-Pacific whānau who responded, the majority felt that it was okay. And I think that that's important when I look at the demographics of these rooms, that we don't, in this room, that we don't become, um, you know, like the saviour gate. We need to make sure we involve the people that we are talking about or that decisions affect the most. Anyway, so... Um, that wasn't a question, that was a comment. Um, but comment. my okay. question for you, I mean, it's election year, bro. Um, you see the power of communities that aren't in parliament but to, that do affect change. What do you see the role of our government or parliament or election year? Um, what's your hopes and aspirations for this year and what do you want people to be thinking about? Yeah, great question. Um, so, for the first time ever, Action Station has decided to ignore the election, um, which is quite a bold choice, I think. Um, but we've decided that we want to focus on transformative systems change, and that doesn't happen within electoral cycles or within the parliamentary system. Um, and I know that might sound like a bit like on high, because actually the truth is who is in government does affect our people more than most, um, and it affects them in very real ways, like that extra $25 a week on benefits makes a difference um, for people in my whānau. And so I don't want to be like too like, we, have to, we can just ignore everything that happens in the kāwanatanga sphere, because I don't think we can, but I don't think we, need, we should rest all of our hopes and all of our aspirations in politicians and the Westminster parliamentary system. Um, and so for us, we have very deliberately chosen to work on the system change mahi in election year, stay focused on our bigger kaupapa that we've been working on for ages, um, and this vision that we're going to be launching and this coalition that we're going to be launching into the world, we're actually going to do that after the election um, because we want to position it as a kaupapa that goes beyond electoral cycles. Yeah. Shot kapai. So what I heard there is everyone votes, but actually the change happens, not... Um not just, not just over there in that fuddy over there. Um, Partai from the floor, Any question, anyone with a question that you want to ask? I will privilege our young people too as well. If there's any of our young ones, feel brave to step up. But I'll oh, throw you board then. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, so um, Action Station launched in July 2014. Um, it came about because the co-founders of the organisation um, were frustrated with the limits of what can be achieved in party politics and they wanted to bring people power back to democracy. Um, the model is loosely based on this idea that we are multi-issue, um, we work across um, kaupapa um, and that's because people think across kaupapa um, and and also we see it as being a value add to the various awesome organisations who are focused on single issues or single categories. And so that enables us to work with Just Speak one day and Child Poverty Action Group another day um, and, um, and, uh, and, and build relationships across the sector in that way, which is why we're, we think a natural progression for this mahi is for us to be doing the systems change work. Um, we are connected to uh, an international um, sisterhood of organisations. There's 19 of these organisations all around the world. Um, the way that that sisterhood works is that we share knowledge, um, we share resources like templates for great fundraising emails and templates for job descriptions and um, uh, we do like webinars for each other where we teach each other how to run an online digital rally and things like that, especially with COVID. Um, because a lot of our countries share a lot of the same challenges. Like we're all facing oligarchs who have a strong interest in maintaining an unjust status quo. Um, we all have racists in our country. And so we're, a lot of us are facing similar challenges. And, um, and so the more we can share and learn from one another, the better. And then we also do secondments to each other's organisations, which is where I didn't know what the word secondment meant before I started Action Station. It means you go and work at another place for a while, but you still get paid by your other work. Um, and so we do secondments at like times of election or referenda to support one another. Um, and what I have learned from the open network is that it enables you to go from zero to 100 
real quick. And um, that is what I think can happen if we do the systems change work, because I am proposing that Action Station can sort of act like the open network, um, but for the New Zealand progressive movement, because we will help you to share lessons, to share learnings, to share, um, uh, to share your knowledge so that we can all go from zero to 100 in our transformative systems change. Mahi. Can't wait. One more part tie over here. And can you speak into the mic, please, because it's being recorded, Keldat. Uh, thank you so much. What a great presentation, Laura. That's thank good. you. Um, great, great um, information there. I was frantically taking notes. <laughs> hey, um, last election, you guys were really involved in lifting young people's vote. Mm. And I know, because I was partnering with you on a few of those ventures, yeah. that there were some successes and failures. Yep. Can you teach us a little bit before you walk away from election campaigning <laughs> um, how to get that young first vote up for this election? Yeah, it's real tricky, eh? Because, um, because I, I've gone hundies on like, trying to get young people to vote for like ages. And, um, and what I have learned in that time is that lots of people have tried to get young people out to vote pretty much every single election, and it's never worked. And so, um, and so yeah, I'm trying to... like frame it in a way that doesn't just be like, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does go up incrementally. Um, but I think, I think probably my biggest lesson from the mahi that I've done there and that I carry into the lesson that we have at Action Station now is, um, so the organization I used to run and work for previously was called Rock and Roll, and we would just basically get funding maybe like three to six months out from every election, and then we would organize rapidly and we would try to mobilize young people to vote. Um, but what I've learned is that young people don't like being ignored for the rest of the time and then only being asked for what they think just like three to six months out from an election. And so I think what we need to be doing is we need to be working with young people over the long term um, to um, help them realize their aspirations and build their political power, not just three to six months out from an election. And the truth is there are amazing young people who are already organizing really kick-ass campaigns. Young people organized the Wellington Black Lives Matter rally that was attended by 20,000 people. Young people have been organizing the school strikes for climate um, marches that have been huge. Um, we've worked with a lot of young people who have taken really powerful petitions all the way from sort of launch to delivery to oral submission and then created change. And so actually I think in a lot of ways it's less like how do we get young people's voting up and more like how do we step back and, you know, just support young people to do what they do. Yeah. Kapoi. And that's a great note to finish on because um, we are all, we all kaitiaki while we're on this earth, but our job's to build up future generations coming through. Um, Hōmai te paki paki mō uh, Laura Keldak. <laughs>